In the United States, amid wild weather and natural disasters, climate change has become a political battleground. It is time to exit the Paris Accord. It really comes down to the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. Now, it's a focus of the 2020 election. There's just a person in the White House that is deluded. We can't wait for him. And the world watches as one of the planet's biggest polluters makes its choice on a defining issue of our time. We have to fight for this like it's life or death, because it is. New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, vilified by the right, worshipped by the left, and the face of climate change activism in American politics. We can show up to vote for the first time, but not the last time. And that's what we're going to do. She's pushing for a Green New Deal for America, a grand plan to stop using fossil fuels and transform society in the process. It's become a crucial issue for the Democrats in the 2020 race. I'm very encouraged by where a lot of the candidates have gone in terms of the scope and the size of their plans. I think that there is more room for the whole field to be more ambitious because for so long we were dealing with these small piecemeal plans as though they were solutions, like for example just a carbon tax. And I, I think that we've been successful in shifting the scope and the scale that people realize that just one small plan isn't enough. We need a very widespread comprehensive solution. America ready for a Green New Deal? I think we are. Thank you. Her supporters go further. I think America's dying for a Green New Deal because we literally need to save the planet. But um, the only people who, who lose in this are the oil companies. Everybody else benefits. The corridors of power in Washington, D.C. are echoing with demands for change. These activists are from an influential group called Sunrise Movement. They want Congress to embrace the principle of the Green New Deal, even if for the moment it's light on details and heavy on ideals. My name is Varshini Prakash. I'm one of the founders of Sunrise Movement. And we are building an army of young people. The Green New Deal is a massive socioeconomic mobilization at a scale that the world has not seen since World War II. It will have to be a decades-long project to tackle virtually every sector of society, from transportation to buildings to power sectors and more, tackling the, great, the twin crises of our lifetime, economic inequality and climate change, in one fell swoop. The strategy, supported by Ocasio-Cortez, is maximum political pressure on everyone. This is a sit-in at the office of House Speaker and powerful Democrat Nancy Pelosi. AOC said, the climate delayer is the new climate denier. Caring about the issue and wanting to do something about it just isn't enough at this point. And young people are fed up. We are fed up with the generation above us that is going full tilt towards condemning us to a future that we cannot live in. Political parties on either side of the aisle have sold us out, and we need to see action commensurate with the scale of the problem. When the future of the planet is at stake, there is no middle ground. The message is getting through to the Democratic presidential candidates and party power brokers lining up against Donald Trump. We're the wealthiest nation in the history of the world, so yes, we can afford Medicare for all and a Green New Deal. Climate change is now a top issue. Political futures depend on striking the right urgent tone. Speaker Pelosi, how important is climate change to your agenda? It was my flagship issue as Speaker of the House when I was there first, and it's still way up high on our agenda in the House. Hurricanes, wildfires, Mother Nature has joined the conversation. And you can't deny that. And all of a sudden, people are waking up to the reality. This is not a next generation reality. This is happening in real time. And they see the complete abject absence of leadership by this current administration that's just in complete denial. Senator Booker, can you tell me how important is climate change to your policy agenda? It is central to all my other policies. It's got to be the number one lens with which we look at everything, from ag policy to trade policy. Uh, it is an existential threat to the planet Earth. It's time for action. This is our last chance. 
We need a president who will make defeating climate change the number one party, a priority for the United States. I intend to do that and create 8 million jobs. It's the destiny of the greatest country on earth, and that's America. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm walking around. Take things out. Yeah. Be careful. The urgency of democratic activism feels a world away in Oklahoma, a deeply conservative heartland state suffering through record floods. Emergency worker Doug Hunter takes us out to see the worst of it. That is the top of someone's home. This happened within about 24 hours total. Farming is the business around here, but wheat fields have turned to lakes and animals have perished. All of this is uh, county roads and obviously these are people's homes that have been here for, for a very long time. It's hard to connect specific weather events directly to climate change, but scientists say that global warming means they're becoming more frequent and more severe. May was the second wettest month on record in America, and for many, what's happening in the Midwest is evidence of our changing planet. This year has been extraordinary. I mean, so in the midst of all of this, over the weekend, we had tornadoes everywhere. And it's just been very strange. And we're, you know, we're still facing uh, next week. We've got like four days of rain. And you think so, it's climate change? Oh, of course I do. I do. Yes. You say that like lots of people you know don't think it's climate change. I would perhaps say that that's possible. That's partly because this region relies heavily on the fossil fuel industry. Many here regard the idea of climate change with suspicion. There's always been some kind of climate change. Uh, it moves around the world, and so there's probably no question that there's something happened. But uh, you know, we'll see. I'm sure there'll be a lot of experts uh, pontificate on what happened. But it don't have anything to do with the CO2 and not letting here, because that's been pro proven that that's happened hundreds of times in the past. So you don't necessarily think that climate change is related to human activity? I don't, no. I think you would do it anyway. Still, even here in the Bible Belt, some are coming to uncomfortable conclusions. Do you worry that all of this might be related to climate change and that it could get worse for people who live in communities like this one? I'm going to say yes, even though I'm a Republican. <laughs> Yeah, and I, you know, my Republican Party said, you know, really my, the leadership of the Republican Party is denying this, but it's obvious. If you pay attention and, and stay up with stuff and the Arctic and the ice caps melting, come on. If you want to be blind to it, you know, go ahead, but if you want to just be honest about it, yeah, the climate change has affected this, this whole world. With no consensus amongst his base, Donald Trump is on safe ground when he denies the role humans play in climate change. He thinks the Green New Deal is a socialist fantasy that threatens the fossil fuel industry he came to office pledging to protect. The so-called Green New Deal. Their plan is estimated to cost our economy nearly $100 trillion, a number unthinkable. I will not stand for it. We will defend the environment, but we will also defend American sovereignty, American prosperity, and we will defend American jobs. Under Donald Trump, climate deniers have had a real influence on government policy. This is the man hired to oversee the administration's transition period at the Environmental Protection Agency. Myron Ebel has been described by campaigners as a climate criminal. There is an alternative to, to the global warming agenda. It's called the Trump Energy Dominance Agenda, and it is working. The United States is now the world's largest producer of oil and natural gas, and we are starting to export it after decades of importing more and more oil. We're now exporting it. Should American energy dominance come at the expense of increasing global warming, making climate change worse, and having negative effects on public health. Global warming is not a crisis, and it's not likely to become a crisis. The rate of warming is modest. The impacts are mild. Uh, Which therefore, flies in the face of scientific consensus. No, no, I, I, I do not believe that. I, th I think it, it flies in the face of mainstream media consensus.
Greta Thunberg has become a global icon of climate activism. But even as the groundswell of voices demanding action grows, she's worried about the mood in the White House. When you look at America and you hear what Donald Trump says about the climate crisis, what do you think? I don't really think, <laughs> because I, I mean, I don't know how, how to react. Should you laugh or should you cry? Uh, I often laugh because it's so absurd. I think that, among many other things, have proven that this, this change will not come from, from the people at, at the top, so to speak. Uh, it has to come from movements, from grassroots. And that, I think, is what we are trying to do. Whatever the power of the grassroots, America is one of the world's biggest polluters. And without its leadership, the future is uncertain. It feels like the most powerful nation on earth is at a crossroads on climate change. And with an election just around the corner, the choice facing voters is a stark one. Four more years of Donald Trump, and they'll get a man who barely seems able to acknowledge the scale of the crisis, let alone take action to tackle it. And if a Democrat wins, they'll get someone from a party that's increasingly embracing the need for massive, far-reaching, even radical mobilization in order to avert an impending catastrophe. The day after the election will mark the first opportunity for the US to formally withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement. For those hoping to make progress on climate change, there couldn't be more at stake. Hannah Thomas-Peter, Sky News.